Well, hello there and welcome to day one of Week of Prayer. Are you excited about this week? I know I am. I love being able to see you each day of the week to be able to share Jesus more with you and to be able to discover more about who God is for us today. As you know, our theme for the whole year is I Am, exploring more of who God is. And as I said last week, our speaker for this entire week will be Pastor Jeremiah Green from the Mount Rubido SDA Church. I'm so excited about his messages, but before we get to the message, I want to invite you to join us in some songs of praise. If you're in the classrooms, feel free to join us in humming and doing the motions. If you're at home, feel free to sing along with us as well.
Now this week we have a very special theme song. Our theme song for the whole year has been His Name is Wonderful, but Pastor Jeremiah Green has put together a special theme song just for this week of prayer that he's sung along with some of his friends as well. So listen in to this theme song called I Can Pray. I can pray anywhere, any time of day. I can always talk to you, and you will hear me. You'll hear me. I can pray anywhere, any time of day. I can always talk to you, and you will hear me. You'll hear me. I don't have to worry, I don't have to fear, I can always trust, you are always near, oh I will pray, Lord I will pray, no matter what I'm facing, no matter what I've done, staring at a mountain or a giant that comes, oh I will pray, Lord I will pray. This is what the Lord says, He who made the earth, the Lord who formed it and established it, the Lord is His name. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. I can pray anywhere, any time of day. I can always talk to you and you will hear me, you will hear me. I can pray anywhere, any time. I can always talk to you, and you will hear me, you will hear me. I don't have to worry, I don't have to fear, I can always trust, you are always near. Oh, I will pray, Lord, I will pray. No matter what I'm facing, no matter what I've done, staring at a mountain, or a giant that comes, oh, I will pray, Lord, I will pray, calling your name to you. Now it's chat time. It's the time that we get to focus on praying to God. Chat is an acronym that stands for different parts of prayer. The C stands for checking in with God about how we're feeling. The H stands for to ask God for help for the things that you need in your life. The A stands for apologizing to God for the things that you've done that have hurt yourself, others, or Him. And finally, the T stands for thank, to thank God for the many blessings that He's given to us in our lives. Today, our dice landed on a for apologize. So spend the next 30 seconds or so just saying a silent prayer to God to apologize to God for things that you know that you've done that have hurt others, hurt yourself, or hurt God. Boys and girls, we know that we have a God who promises that if we confess our sins to Him, He is faithful and just to forgive us from all of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thanks for joining me for chat time. Now's the time that we get to celebrate some of you for being amazing peace builders on campus. For each day of week of prayer, we'll celebrate one student from each class throughout the whole school. Starting with Ms. Wilson's class, TK. This person does a wonderful job of praising people, being a kind friend to all and helping others. Catherine Elders from Miss Rothgeb's class. He is thoughtful and respectful to all he meets. Duke Pack. 
from Mrs. Canwell's class. He praises his classmates when they are working hard. Thank you for being so kind. Caleb Ochoa, from Mrs. West's class. She's always willing to speak up when technology isn't working. By doing this, she helps all the remote learners. Bell Pinedo, from Mrs. Clickstow's class. He has a gentle voice and is super thoughtful with his friends and teacher. Asher Ray, from Mrs. Del Roca's class. This person is a kind student who is helpful to all and makes good choices. She speaks kind words to others and is quick to help anyone who needs it. She's also a happy helper. Alicia Kim, from Ms. Solis' class. He's always participating in class and adding to discussion. He's always kind and helpful to his teacher and to others. Kyle Lopez, from Ms. Ops' class. She's a kind friend and looks for ways to help others. Isabella Blackerby, from Mrs. Robinson's class, for being friendly and respectful. Dallas Pack, from Mrs. Jimenez's class. He is a thoughtful and observant classmate. MJ Kines, from Mrs. Shelton's class, for her positive attitude and cooperation. Autumn Hewitt, from Mrs. Kotz's class. She's always willing to help out in the classroom and is a good friend to everyone. Emma Santini, from Mrs. Guzman's class. You praise your classmates and others with your kind words and gestures. You are inclusive to others and are considerate towards their feelings when making choices in class and on the playground. Joffrey Deliso. From Mrs. Sanchez's class, because he's a friend to all, he loves others well and is always there to listen and offer advice to his friends. Ian Lee. From Mrs. Wilde's class, classmates say that he is always kind and makes funny jokes to cheer people up. They also say he is always sticking up for others and is cheerful and fun to play with. Zeke Braithwaite. From Mrs. Pope's class, your classmates see you as a wonderful peace builder. They say you are always nice, helpful, and caring to everyone. You include everyone, and if you see someone who is sad or alone, you are there for them. I am very proud of you. Sydney Bello. From Mrs. Swamidas' class, because your classmates say that you are always willing to lend a helping hand and you are kind. Your personality shines through your kindness toward others. Thank you for being an amazing peace builder, Emily Truett. From Miss Lee's class, her classmates say that she is very loyal, thoughtful, and a kind friend. She stands up for you when you can't stand up for yourself. She never complains about assignments, even if they are more difficult ones. Kara Francisco. From Mrs. Hubbard's class, your classmates say you are a great supportive friend who gives positive energy. You are a wonderful listener. You're always kind, considerate, and helpful. Thanks for being an amazing peace builder, Kate Salvin. From Mrs. Richard's class, he is always helpful, kind, and humorous. He is a great and reliable student who gets his work done on time and gives 100% to his grades. He is a very loyal friend and classmate. Connor Craig. And finally from Mrs. Gowen's class, this person is kind and a good friend who plays fair during recess and is a friendly person. Leo Lee. Congratulations to all of our peace builders. Thank you for building peace at home, at school, and in your communities each day. Your teachers will be handing out your certificates to you later today. Now, boys and girls, it's the time that we get to listen to God's Word, shared to us by Pastor Jeremiah Green. Listen carefully to see if you can hear what message he has to share about who God is today. Hello. My name is Pastor Jeremiah Green, and I'm the children's pastor at the Mount Rubido Seventh Adventist Church. This week, we'll be looking at who God is. Each day, I will give you my understanding of who God is, and I have a special animal that's going to represent that day as well. I hope you like animals because I have some beautiful animal stories for you. Today's message is, I am a messenger. But before we begin, why don't you bow your heads and let's pray together. Dear God, I ask that you will bless the children to always remember that you love them, that you care, and that you are a messenger. In Jesus' name, amen. One of the most amazing stories that we see in the Bible is found in the New Testament in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 3. In Luke chapter 3, we see Jesus about to be baptized. And we see two amazing things that take place that we wouldn't normally see. First, we hear a voice from heaven that actually speaks and says, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. We wouldn't have expected to hear a voice from heaven, but we do. 
God was so excited about what his son was about to do that he spoke from his throne in heaven all the way down to the Jordan River on earth. Now, the second thing that we see is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't come as a voice, no. The Bible says the Holy Spirit came down in bodily form like a dove. So that's the first animal I want to share with you this week. It's a dove. Why do you think the Holy Spirit is represented as a dove? Out of all the other animals he could have chosen, why a dove? Many stories have been told throughout the ages about the roles of a dove, and it's amazing. They must have some great memories because you can send them out and they will come right back to you. Mm-hmm. Someone needs to hear what I'm saying right now. The dove has this innate homing device. It's called a magnetoreception ability. It's like a GPS system in its brain. Wow, God is so amazing. Listen, some doves have been known to fly over a total of a thousand miles. But you knew that already, right? You remember the story about Noah and the ark? The first animal Noah sent out was a raven to let him know whether or not it was time to come out of the ark. Something must have happened to that raven for that raven flew around and around and around, but he refused to come back to the ark. Maybe he got lost. We don't know what happened, but we do know that he stayed alive because we still have ravens today and there were only two ravens in the boat. But then Noah decided to send out a what, everybody? A dove. He sent out a dove and that dove came back with a message. That dove came back with an olive branch in his beak. You see, doves are known to be message bearers. Doves are known to be communicators or at least facilitate the communication process. Before there was ever a cell phone, come on somebody, there was a dove. Before there was the ability to send a letter through the mailbox, mm, there was a dove. Boys and girls, I need you to see that the Holy Spirit is like a dove because the Holy Spirit is a messenger. The Holy Spirit bears messages from God and he brings them from the throne of God to us human beings. And God has a message for each one of you. His message is simple. His message is plain. He wants you to know that he loves you. He wants you to know that you are the apple of his eye. He wants you to know that you are continually on his mind, that he can't stop thinking about you. He wants you to know that whatever you're going through, whatever you are experiencing, if it's good or if it's bad, he cares for you. He says, place all your cares on me because I care for you. And that is the beauty of prayer. See? When you pray, you can actually place your cares back on God. You can actually tell Him how you're feeling. You can actually express to Him what's on your mind. The Holy Spirit carries those prayers back and forth. And believe me, God hears the prayers of little children. God hears your prayers and he answers them. I remember there was this one time my family had arranged a flight all the way to Haiti. Our entire family. We planned to go to the airport early and we stayed at my friend's home right near the airport. We stayed there so we could make it on time. But when we got to the airport, the flight assistant at the register said, I'm sorry, but in order to take this international flight, you have to be two hours early. We were messed up. All our arrangements had been made in Haiti. We had a hotel. We even had our personal bodyguard who was going to take us back and forth. But she said, you're not going to be able to make it on this flight. You know, as a father, that really messed me up. 
I just sat on the floor and tears started coming down my eyes. I felt like it was beyond my ability to bear. While the other children and my wife were saying, it's okay, daddy, for me, it was just too much. At that time, two of my children wrote songs. One of them wrote this song. Deuteronomy, we're gonna get on that plane. Deuteronomy, we're gonna get on that plane. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, we're gonna get on that plane. I didn't want to hear that song. And another one was like, believe. All you gotta do is believe. Don't be a doubting Thomas. Just believe. <laughs> That's when we decided to bow our heads and pray. During that prayer, it seemed like the Holy Spirit spoke and said, ask where the closest airport is. I went to the register and asked the attendant where the closest airport, she told us it was an hour and a half away. And then she said the flight is leaving in three and a half hours. I got on the phone with my friend who lived close by and I said, hey, can you take us to this airport? He got in his car and he ripped us to the airport and we made it on that plane. And I don't want you to miss this. We got on that plane, not because my friend drove so fast, and believe me, he drove fast. We got on that plane, not because we had enough time, because we barely had enough time. We got on that plane because God answered our prayers. He arranged all our situation to the point where we could actually get on that plane and make it on our trip to Haiti. I want you to know that God is able to arrange your situations as well. I want you to know that God cares about you and there are times when he will intervene in your situation only because you pray. He sends his messenger to comfort you, to remind you that he is there, that he loves you, that he cares for you, that he will be with you always, even to the end of the world. I want to know if you believe that. If you believe that, I want you to raise your hand right where you are. And I want to pray with you. Raise your hand. Let's pray. God, your child is raising his or her hand right now because they believe that you care for them. And I know that you care for me. I want to say thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die for our sins. Thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit as the messenger to remind us of your great love. And this week, as we learn each day who you are, I pray that we will accept you every day. In Jesus' name I pray that everybody say amen. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining. I hope you see you tomorrow. Boys and girls, did you catch that? Pastor Jeremiah Green shared that God is a messenger shared through the animal of the dove. And God's message to you today is that he loves you so much. He's there for you, he's powerful, he wants to help you. And today, I wonder if you could challenge yourself to be a messenger for God. Look around for those who might need encouragement and a reminder of how much God loves them and how much you do as well. Each day of the week, you'll be getting a name tag like this. And on the name tag, you are going to be able to write down the message from that day. So on today's name tag, I'd like you to write down I am a messenger. Not only is God a messenger of love and peace, we also can be messengers for Him in the way that we live and in the words that we say. Now let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you so much for day one of week of prayer and for the message that you are a messenger of love and your message is clear to us. Help us to be your messengers as well to share your love with those around us each day. In your name we pray, amen. Thanks for joining us for day one of week of prayer. I can't wait to see you each day of this week to learn more about who God is. Have a great day.